Does sleep apnea impact on driving? Yeah, absolutely. So lots of research shows that obstructive sleep apnea greatly increases the risk of motor vehicle accidents um, and work-related accidents as well. So that's really important, not just for those of us who drive as part of our day-to-day -day lives, but particularly for commercial drivers who drive as part of their work or might be transporting other people. And research shows somewhere between double and ten times the risk of motor vehicle accidents in people with moderate to severe sleep apnea. So that's why there's all this hassle from Vic Roads or Roads and Maritime in New South Wales if you get diagnosed with sleep apnea about having to let the licensing authorities know. So the way the law is in Victoria and also New South Wales is as a driver it's your responsibility to let the licensing authority know if there's anything that's impacting on your fitness to drive. So if you do get diagnosed with significant sleep apnea it's important to let the licensing authority know. That'll then trigger a request to your usual doctor for a report, which often means you've got to go and see them. They'll do an eye test as part of that. Uh, but then it also may require review by a sleep specialist. So I know that's something that you help me organise. If people come and need that, they come and see you and you facilitate that process. And in essence, I've got to review someone's treatment data, make sure it's working effectively, assess their risk in terms of driving, and then prepare a report for the licensing authority. Many people will avoid doing the sleep study because of fears of losing their licence. Uh, is this a justified fear or...? No, not, not at all. Uh, it really just means if somebody's got significant sleep apnea, there's a process that we need to go through, um, but almost never results in them losing their licence. It just means there's some paperwork process that needs to be done or they may need to ensure that their sleep apnea is treated appropriately and just provide that documentation for the licensing authority. Have you got any advice for people who are sleepy while they're driving? Don't drive. <laughs> That's the simple advice. All of us as drivers need to take that on board. If we're feeling sleepy, then the time to pull over is not. Once you're getting the micro sleeps and you've had a head nod and you've found yourself drifting across lanes, really is important every two hours if you're driving long distances to make sure you have a brief nap. If you are feeling sleepy, don't crank up the radio, wind down the window, actually pull over and have a power nap.